the victories you won. I say thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We thank God and we want to welcome you to another week, another episode, another session of the Worship Hour. And today we have a very special guest. We have Pastor Charlie Barnes. He has come to us from St. James in Pecos, Texas. He is a San Angelo native, and today he gets to preach at home. Good morning. It's a blessing to be here at Galilee. Uh, the Lord is good. And we'll be talking about it is impossible to please God without faith. And James said, count it all joy when we fall in trials and different tribulations. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Amen. Amen. Well, we're looking forward to it, and we want to invite everybody. Come on. Let's go to church. Let's Hallelujah. go to church. Hallelujah. This morning, we get an opportunity to observe one of the ordinances that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told us to observe. And that is the ordinance of baptism. My Lord. Last week, we observed uh, the Lord's Supper. This week, we are getting a chance to observe the baptism. says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed, in those, blessed are those who trust in him. Another translation says, blessed are those who take refuge in him. Have anybody tasted of the goodness of the Lord? Do you know what that's like? Then we came to praise the Lord this morning and we want you to help us lift him up. We want you to help us praise his name. Something miraculous happens every time one of God's children gets saved. Come on, something miraculous happens.
when I think about how he picked me up, turned me around, took my feet on solid ground. I can't help but pray. I can't help but pray. I can't help but pray. Somebody got to move out of my way. Somebody got to pray. 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 This morning, I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming Pastor Charlie Barnes and his wife, amen. So I'm going to ask both of them to stand, amen. In Galilee, I want to just say welcome to two wonderful people, amen, amen. Both of them have something to give. Um, Pastor Barnes is going to deliver our word on today, and his wife is going to lead him into that word with a, with a beautiful song that she is going to sing. Amen. Amen. So they come to us as a couple, but they come to us as one. Amen. They come to us as a couple, but they come to us as one. So I want to welcome you here and say thank you for being here. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Brother Barnes is pastoring out, uh, he and his wife, uh, out in Pecos, Texas. And every, yes, every other week they drive out to Pecos and back. Amen. And whenever they're needed out there, they drive out to Pecos and back. And that's not just right down the road for those of you who don't know. That's several hours away, and as they are have been called of God to this ministry, they have they have elected to say, Yes, Lord, here we are, send us. Not everybody can make that drive every week. And they've been doing it for several years now. And they do that year week in and week out. And they and they don't complain. Now, every now and then you might hear them say they're just a little bit tired after the drive. But after they say that, they say, if you need us, just call us and we'll be right there. Servants of the living God, ready to do the work that God has called them to do. So I'd ask everyone if you would just put your right hand out and point it toward Pastor Barnes. Say, Pastor Barnes. Preach the word. Pastor Barnes, preach the unadulterated word of God. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 It is a present, it's a blessing always to be in the house of the Lord. And it is an even greater blessing to be in the land of the living, the times that we are living in right now, with everything that's going on. But I want you to be encouraged that our lives, we know that our lives are always in the Lord's hands. He takes care of us no matter what situations or circumstances that we face. We always can put our trust and faith in the Lord. Amen.
just lift your hands and say, oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I comes your way. We can stand. Amen. Amen. Giving good morning to all. My wife and I bring you greetings from St. James Missionary Baptist Church of Pecos, Texas, where Miss Susie Walker grew up. And yes, the banners are still hanging. They old, but they still hanging. Giving honor to God, to Pastor Pope. First Lady, Minister Gloria Pope, and to all the ministers in the house, and, and to all the brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we're here this morning. Hope you will have a good time. Now, if you want me to get through quick, when I talk, y'all will what? Talk back to me. No, 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 I don't want to say amen. I want you to talk back to me. Talk, talk, talk. And I know that Pastor Pope has studied the word witches, so y'all should know the word. Amen. So let us go in prayer. Our oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, you know I'm nervous, but I know you're not nervous. I know you predestinated this day, Father God. And Father God, I ask for peace now. I ask for wisdom and knowledge. And not only, not only that, Father God, I ask that you just come into the room, Father God. Into the hearts of men and women, Father God, and children, Father God. And Father God, would you just, Father God, dissect their heart, Father God. Let them know that, Father God, their life is in your hand. No matter what they're going through, they can stay. So, Father God, we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. You said the grass wither and the flowers fade away. But, but your word stands forever. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Pastor, can I take this off or not? Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
The text today will be coming from James chapter 1. And the background scripture will be Psalms 37, verse 20. I feel like a stranger because we're always in Pecos. But at the same time, I feel I'm at home. I see some familiar faces that I went to grade school with. And my cousin in the back, Sister Fanny, and I, my sister-in-law here. And, and I remember my aunt was standing at that door many years ago as an usher. And I remember living down the street and walking up here when I was a little kid, when Pastor Williams was here. My mom was sent us to church, and I did not know that one day, full circle, that I would be standing in this pulpit. I don't know about y'all, it means a whole lot to me. It, it means a whole lot to me because, first of all, I haven't had an opportunity to preach in this town in a long time. Pastor Pope, the, the, the Lee Pope. <laughs> Started out there, Sister Todd, she remember those days. Hallelujah. God has brought us a mighty long ways. But as you stand, I wouldn't have you standing long. And, and, and I want to focus on 2, verse 2, and through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into dower's temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. But James said, but let patience have perfect work. That you might be perfect and entire wanting nothing. And our background scripture will come from Psalms 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his ways. In other words, he's happy that he ordered your steps. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 I'm still kind of nervous, Pastor Pope, and I, I'm not the one that will stand behind the pulpit. If, if I have your permission, sometimes I, I, I draw off the people who are drawing off of me. So if I, if I step down here and get close to you, that means you're drawing off of me, and I'm drawing off of you. I'm going to act like I'm at St. James, I'm at home. Because when you go to other people's house, you got to really... You can't take off your shoes. You, you got to sit there and be stiff. But I'm going to act like I'm home. And to break the ice, I, I just want to tell this little joke. Just to break the ice. There, there was two friends. that they, they was wealthy friends, Pastor. And, and they wanted to take a trip. And, and they took a trip on a boat. And they were sailing all over the place. And... They became shipwrecked. They was on this island, and there wasn't nobody on the island but them. One of the men started crying and shouting and panicking and, and saying, we're going to die out here. And the other one was just sitting there at peace. And the one that was panicking, he said, he said man, you're you not worried? He said, I'm, I'm not worried about a thing. He said, said why are you not worried? He said, I make $100,000 a week. And the man looked at me and said, money can't help us out here. He said, I don't know why you're so at peace because money can't help us out here. He said, you, you don't understand. He said, I tithe 10000 of that a week. And the man said, what that got to do with us being stranded out here? 
He said, I tell you what, we missed Sunday. We missed church Sunday. My pastor coming to find us. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's zero in. I like to use the word as a springboard. I like to take off, and, and it's kind of like Sunday school, but as I get into it, I'll be moving around. But James, a brother, half brother of Jesus. James, I don't know if y'all knew this, but James did not get converted over till the day of Pentecost. James, I don't know if he doubted in his brother. I don't know if he was jealous of his brother. But he was in the 120. And after the day of Pentecost, James became a disciple. And then he wrote this book. We don't know what James went through, but we know that James was a witness. And he starts out, he's saying, my brethren. If you would allow me, I'll say my sisters also. The word of God said what? Count it all joy. Some somebody talked to me today. I, I, I just I just went and buried a man yesterday, and and uh, uh, the family. How can they count it all joy? I just watched my uncle being buried in Los Angeles on Wednesday. I was in tears. How can I count it joy? When your bills are backed up, somebody said do. And some might say overdue. How can you count it all joy? Somebody talk to me today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James knew something we didn't know. But when we leave here, we all going to know. James said to just count it all joy when you fall. You didn't plan it. It just happened. You didn't plan on that job moving to another city. You just... Fail in it. And James said, count it all joy. When you fall into different dollars. We see here that the writer was going through something. And James is also said in 226, he said, faith without works is what? Yeah. Now y'all talking to me. Come on. Yeah, now, now I feel like I'm at home now. <laughs> faith without works is dead. Say with me, faith, faith. causes you to have action. You to have action. Faith, faith endures, endures trials. trials. It takes faith, yes, Reverend. Yes, sir. It takes some faith. I believe y'all was talking about that this morning. Right. It takes faith yes. to endure. Yes. It takes faith yes. to endure. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also say that, that, that it is impossible to what? Please to please God. Without faith. So this morning, I, I want to wake you up. The devil ain't after your health. The devil ain't after your money. He's not even after your children. The devil is after your faith. Why? Because it's impossible to please God without faith. 
These trials come to give you faith. David understood that. He said, my steps are ordered by the Lord. When you're going through something, all you got to do is what? Keep stepping. I know it said be still, but you can't just be still and get a job. Some people think a job's going to come to them. They got to go to the job. It causes you to have action. It's impossible to please God without faith. James must have got that revelation from David. Because he said, count it all joy. This is, God is actually wanting to give someone a promotion today. Because every time you go through a trial and you're crying and you're complaining, he's not going to promote you to the next level. He wants your character. He wants to know what's in you. When you're going through something, what's in you? Because what's in you is going to come out. I'm about to lose. That's all right. I get excited sometimes. I, I did not know my wife was going to sing that song, Pastor. But actually, when you think about it, and when you're going through faith, if we realize that our life is in his hands, we realize we can stand. Uh-huh. We realize we can take it. Yeah. We realize we can go through it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just come here to encourage you because some of y'all are going through something right now. Yes, yeah. some, the devil is trying to get your faith. You think it is this, you think it is that, it. but it's your Tell faith it. what he's saying. Tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Hallelujah. 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 I remember dragging my feet up and down, going to Pecos, preaching. And I didn't realize it, but when the anointing got me, I felt like I was just walking normal. But after the service, I started dragging it. And I knew God was going to do fix it. And some of us think it's always got to come with a miracle. Some of you just need to go to the doctor and do what the doctor say. I'm just trying to give you some wisdom today. Some of you tell, y'all talking about, I'm believing in Jesus. I don't need this medicine. Yeah, okay. Okay. He also called the doctor, too. He also called the doctor and gave him wisdom to give you wisdom. Some of us here because what? We're taking our medicine. Amen. Mm. I done lost my spot, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it said, count it all joy. Let me put it this way. Count it all joy when you're up against pressure. Count it all joy when you're going through something and you're up against pressure. Because they tell me, pressure busts pipes. Have you ever had a water leak? When the pressure was there, it just busts pipes. And the devil wants to, he wants to put so much pressure on you that you give in. That you give in. That's what he do. He going to put this on you. Ask Job. He, gonna, he put that on Job. He put yeah. this on Job. He took Job's kids. He took Job's animals. Yeah. He took Job's everything that Job had. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was putting pressure on him. Yes, sir. Putting pressure on him. But the pressure calls you. It starts to shake you. It starts to mold you. It starts to tell you, show you who you are in Christ Jesus. All right. And when God get ready to use you, 
he knows you're ready for the master use. Some of us not ready. I told you it took 20 years just to get back here in San Angelo. It took two, eight years going 210 miles for five years every Sunday or six years, but the COVID slowed us down to every other week. We didn't stop. We didn't do no whatever you call it, visual. We was there. We was there. And the devil tried to stop us every now and then, Reverend Snell. Oh, sometimes I didn't think, I, my wife and I, we didn't think we were going to make it. And we had to get there. Shake it off. She had to sing, and then I had to preach. Because why? The trials, the tribulation, the devil came up like a ruined line. But when he comes up, the Bible, the song says, we can take it. Yeah. Some of y'all weak, y'all can't take it. Y'all want to quit, turn your back and run. But let me tell you something, when you turn your back and run, when you put on the whole armor and he shoots it up from the toe yeah. to the head, ain't nothing in the back. He don't speak about nothing in the back, do it? Because it wasn't made to, for you to run. It made for you to stand and fight the enemy. Some of you need to quit running. Stand. Put on the whole armor. Get the word out. And tell the devil what the word say. Great is he that is in me. That he that is in the world. If you got that much in you, you ought to be able to stand. Do you know? That before you was even in your mother's room, but before God even spoke, let there be. He wrote a book on you. He wrote a book. He said, I seen your substance. I seen everything that was in you. You didn't know it, but the day you was going to be baptized, you didn't even realize that. But it was already written down in the book of Psalms 139.16. He wrote a book on you. I'm going to preach somebody's funeral. No, I'm going to have my own funeral. I'm going to tell my pastor, preach the last chapter. That's what I want to hear, the last chapter. Because the book, we don't know what's all in the book. How we got, we got to walk by faith just to see what's in the book. Everybody write a book. They, they ain't wrote a book on themselves because they ain't got to the what? Final chapter. Psalm, David said that that, that, that that was, he just seen the substance of you. He, he, he knew that you was going to be existent. And he, God took the time and wrote your life out. You might think it's a mistake. But I heard Paul said, oh, all things work together for the bad. No, no, wait, wait. Oh, y'all know the word then. It said for the good. To those that are what? Call and love God. According to your purpose. Oh, that means we got to line up. That means these trials trying to line us up to who purpose? God. Oh, y'all wondering why you're going through trials? Because you're trying to do your own thing. you trying to do your own thing. You ain't, got, you ain't asked God for permission. You ain't, got, you ain't asked God for the will of God. Say, so what is the will in my life, God? Shake me up. Because if I use my own mind, I'll be doing my own thing. It takes some suffering when he starts shaking you up. It stay, I mean, kind of like the hip bone connected. Oh. It, 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 it hurts sometimes when, when God starts connecting some things in your life. Talk about it. Talk about it. 
He said, he said, he said, he said, Paul put it this way, he said, you was predestined. You were predestinated. I ordained you for my will, for my purpose. Y'all think y'all doing your own thing. I seen you last night. You, you was all in it. But you was predestinated to be at new birth last night. You predestinated to be here this morning. It, you don't catch God off guard. You might think you off guard, but you're on time with God. God already know. He already know this day. I'm just glad that this day come to pass because I didn't know Pastor Hope. We met several years ago. But he seemed fit to put me here today. It was predestinated. All we doing is walking in God's word. Walking in God's purpose. And when you walk in God's purpose, it's there isn't no mistakes. You might think it is. But God is on time God. This other, this other scripture, it, 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 it just also blessed me and encouraged me because Jeremiah, he realized something in 29, 11. He said, he said, for I know. He didn't say, for I guess. <laughs> can y'all say, for I know? For I know. No, no, no. In your own life, can you say, for I know I'm supposed to be here today? For I know I know, I know what's going on in my life. For I know God ain't made a mistake. I know I'm going through trials because I keep falling in them. But the trials is to cause us to have what? Patience. And wanting nothing. Because I know David also said, the Lord is my shepherd. He realized something. God was over and he was his shepherd. And I shall not want what? Nothing. When you get in the will of God and start walking in the will of God, you don't need nothing. All you need to do is do what he say. And when you say when he say and what he's saying, you get there, it's already taken care of. I got a call this morning from Pastor Poe. He said, I tell you what, just pull up in my spot. I, didn't, I, I could walk, but I didn't want nothing. He lined everything out. Because when we're walking according to his purpose, he'll do it. He'll do it. Jeremiah said, for I know he said, what? I, I know the thoughts. <laughs> oh, I know the thoughts. And let me tell you something. Somewhere in his word said, my thoughts ain't like your thoughts. All right. yeah. So somewhere down the line, we got to change the way we think. Yeah. We got to get on God's time. We got to get on God's right. will. Because his thoughts ain't like our thoughts. Amen. His ways ain't even like our ways. His thoughts are higher. We, we sell ourselves low. We, 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 we settle for less than the best. Because we don't know. But when, 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 when we listen to this word, he said, I know the thoughts that I what? Think towards you. Ooh, I'm so glad I'm on God's mind. I'm so glad I'm on God's mind. I think towards you. Hallelujah. He said thoughts of what? See all this, all this, man, what's wrong with us? We, we, we on the phone too much. Because ain't nothing on the news that's good. Ain't nothing on, if we just get away and talk to the Lord. We'll walk in peace. That's it. But every time we look at that phone, chaos is happening. Yeah. Evil is all around us. Oh. Huh. Amen. He said, peace and not evil. Yeah. To give you a future and a hope. Yeah. 
In other words, he said, I, I, I want to give you a good end. Let me get over here. It's not how you started, young man. It's how you're going to finish the race. Yeah, yeah. Because the word said he's going to give you hope in a good end. If you get in his will, God got something good for you already. Yeah. All you got to do is walk in his purpose. Yeah. All you got to do is get this word and know what the word say. And then when, you, when we fall, man, can you, can you imagine Joseph? Can you imagine Joseph when his daddy told him, go feed your brothers? Can, can you imagine they already jealous of him? And, and, and he's happy because he's going to see his big brothers. He's going to do the father's will. And he got them old jealous brothers. We got jealous people out there right now. Everybody got some haters out there. Just keep on living. Keep on doing something. Go get your new car or something. They're going to be hating on you instead of saying, Ooh, sister, I think, Lord oh, God is blessing you. And all they're going to say, She thinks she's all that. You know? Joseph was happy going to see his brothers. Done had a dream, already walking in his vision and stuff. And then he get thrown in a pit. Fall. Paul, count it all joy when you fall, even in the pit. See, 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 when you're going through something, you got to have a vision. God give us all a vision. You got to, you, you, you got to, that sister got the scholarship or whatever. She got a vision. She, she, she got hope. And if she just walk in that. With the word of God, God already got her life mapped out. But she's going to go through some things. Oh, yeah, she's going to go through some things. But she can count it on, joy. Because when she go through some things, God's going to start shaping her, molding her for his purpose. Not her purpose. But whatever she's going to college for, it's, it's for God's purpose. She don't know how it's going to end. But I promise you, the word said it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I don't want to go too long. Y'all won't call me back. Y'all won't. I, I, I don't like keeping people. I know y'all tired. But, but, but here we, we see Isaiah going through some things. And we see through his experience, he said, when you go through waters, mm, it won't, it, it, it's not gonna, you're not going to drown when you, you, when you go through waters. The, the, it, it, if the problems get so big that it's, it looks like a flood, it, it, it's not going to overtake you. All right. uh, trouble don't last always. Yeah. Joy comes in the morning. Let, I never seen the river in my hometown. The river gets up to the bridge, but in the morning, it goes back down. And then he said, when you go through the fire, somebody been on fire before. It feels like you're burning up. He said, you won't even burn you. It reminds me of Moses when Moses was on the backside of the mountain, and he looked over there, and the bush was on fire. I imagine it blew his mind because you know what? The fire didn't even consume the bush. The fire is on you, but it ain't going to consume you. Ain't that some good news today? It will get in you. It will burn like hell, but it ain't going to consume you because God is on your side. Like I say, I don't have time to hoop and I just have time to give inspiration speech. And I know that some of y'all been going some times. Yes, COVID, yes, family members dying, yes, job situations. Yes, but if you just put your hand yes, in God's hand, yes, he will make it all right. Yes, 
He will make it all right. And as you keep going through these trials, Psalmist said that a good man falleth seven times. And I got to thinking about that the other day, and I said, why did he say that? He said, because every time you go through a trial and you get knocked down, the psalmist said, get back up. Amen. Make a step. You're going to get knocked down again, but get back up. And every time you get back up, the devil's going to say, woo, I got to come at him a different way. But every time you get back up, sooner or later, the devil's going to leave you alone. i like to end this with you that. When, when, when Job went through everything, when Job went through everything, he stood. I mean, his friends, he, I, I wouldn't want no two friends like he had. His wife even tried to encourage him, curse God and die. But Job had something in him. Job, Job had something in him. And what he had in him. He had faith. He had faith. And when the devil came at him so many times, the devil just left him on. The good moral of the story about that is God blessed him twice as much. I'm encouraged all of y'all to keep standing. Keep stepping. Whatever you lost, if it's God, the devil going to pay you back. You going to get it back at the end. If you keep stepping, keep going forward, and stay in his wheel. It, 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 some of you already got it back in the stimulus checks. Y'all just don't want to say nothing. <laughs> I can't get an amen on that one. I just got laughing. Y'all know y'all know, y'all was not expecting that. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to get it back. Just hang in there. Keep your hand in God's hand. Because God's hand, your life is in his hand. Amen. Let us bow our head. Our grace eternal, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We come right now, Father God, and I'm asking you to saturate the word of God in people's hearts, Father God. Father God, that it was a seed that, Father God, that, Father God, someone else will water. And, Father God, you will give the increase of their faith, Father God. Now, Father God, let the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest through and abide in us until we all meet again. Let us all say, Amen. You're dismissed. I want to tell you something. The day when you were talking about falling into yes. trouble, falling, my in. Lord, sometimes things just happen, don't they? It just happens. Amen. Like Amen. But you know what? When we fall into trouble, right? When we fall into divers temptations, when we fall into all of that stuff, Pastor told us one thing. We got to count it what? We got to count it all joy. Amen. We got to count it all joy. Why? Because God is still in control. He's in control There's at all times. All times. There's nothing that God is caught, catches God by surprise. That's right. So when we have those moments, look, look to the hills, call on the good shepherd, know that God has a plan for you. Yes. God is going to order your steps. I think that's what you were telling that's us today. That's what I was wasn't? telling you. Amen. You got to take it step by step. Step by step, step by step, let God do it. And I want to tell you something, saints. As we let God do it, God will show us how we can make it through. Amen? Amen. We just ask that you would trust God because it is impossible to please God without faith. Speaking of faith, today might be the day that God is calling on somebody to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If that day is today, yes, Lord. we ask that you just invite Jesus into your heart. Yes. Repent of your sins and say, Lord, forgive me. Come into my heart as Lord and Savior, and you shall be saved. Shall be saved. Because that's why we're here, to get the word to you.
My brothers and sisters, we thank you for joining us for another episode of the Worship Hour. We pray that if you're ever in San Angelo, that you would come by 721 West 19th Street, Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. We have our worship service at 10 a.m. We even have Bible study on Wednesday night at 615. If you want to come to Sunday school, we are out at 9 a.m. So just come on in and we can have a wonderful time in the worship hour. My brothers and my sisters, God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. God Just bless you. remember, we're all predestinated. Amen. Amen. You fought for me, for the victories you won.